Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Tim Woods. He's with the University of Kentucky's Extension Professor there. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Joanna. Good to be with you. Well, I'm glad you're here today, because you're going to talk about something that I think has really made a difference in the state of Kentucky, and that's high tunnel production. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, very exciting what's happening with high tunnels in Kentucky, and uh, part of it, of course, is uh, driven by a uh, very successful program put in place by the NRCS doing some cost share programs and the program has really hit Kentucky I think in a sweet spot uh, we've seen even though Kentucky was a little bit of a late comer to this cost share program Kentucky is now the leading state in terms of what NRCS has funded in terms of cost shares for tunnels and Believe it or not, no other state in the country has more high tunnels than Kentucky. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did not, but yeah. I know that there's a lot of them. It's really revolutionized the way we do farmers markets because it has extended our seasons and farmers can farm year round with, with vegetables. Right, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a really great fit for our folks in Kentucky where we have a lot of farmers that are involved in direct to consumer markets. So whether it's high tunnels, on farm retail markets, uh, but even selling uh, to restaurants or farm to school, mm -hmm. a lot of those uh, opportunities for both early season extension and getting some of those products to market a little earlier and for late season extension, uh, really important uh, for Kentucky. Uh, and of course, you have the quality and consistency that will come out of a lot of those high tunnels as well, where so many things about weather we can't really control very well. but. Those uh, have really helped to bring a better quality product to market. Absolutely. Now, for some people watching, they might say, "What is the high tunnel? Is that like a greenhouse, or what right. is that exactly?" Right. So it's a it's just a simple controlled atmosphere structure where typically plastic covered hoop house mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't have climate control associated with it. Typically, they're relatively low cost structures compared to greenhouses and which can get very very sophisticated glass and climate control typically more for floriculture or uh, other year-round type mm -hmm. uh, more sophisticated structures but those high tunnels are very cost-effective uh, sort of scale scalable opportunities there for a lot of our smaller farmers and so we're the number one state which that's exciting now you guys recently did a study though or survey with high tunnel growers right right so uh, partly just kind of with with the big growth that's taking place and the number of farmers taking those on really wanting to get a better handle on what uh, what are the issues and so producing in a high tunnel is very different from mm -hmm. field production uh, and so a lot of new kinds of issues with uh, what kind of crops, uh, disease issues, even new kinds of insect Insects. pressure, mm -hmm. exactly, and uh, uh, how to manage those kinds of things, and even salinity, other kinds of issues that show up in a high tunnel intensive production space, uh, and so having to come up with new strategies for rotation types of crops uh, all kinds of different approaches and trying to do what we can from uh, wearing our extension hats helping producers do these uh, systems better absolutely and so what did some of those surveys look like yeah so I mean, we're trying to explore uh, the kind of production scale types of houses uh, types of markets that uh, producers are using and something that uh, I was especially interested in was seeing how were the high tunnels actually changing how producers engage with the marketplace mm -hmm. and you know thinking about farm to school opportunities particularly uh, a lot of those times where uh, kids are in school those markets are open are either early early or late into the fall and so we've seen uh, with these high tunnels more of those kinds of opportunities opening up and the same with the restaurant space uh, where uh, it's not just having product in earlier but just being able to be in the market for a longer period of time has really helped our producers uh, to better engage a lot of these markets absolutely just so much more opportunity now you mentioned some of the production type issues now will extension be developing programs to help growers deal with some of this uh, absolutely and it's a uh, uh, part of it's because it's, it's expanding so fast and it needs so substantial but we really uh, have 
really put our shoulder to it. And I know in the Center for Crop Diversification, where I work, uh, and working with the Kentucky Horticulture Council, this is really one of the top uh, priority areas that we're looking at for specialty crops right now. Absolutely. Well, thanks for the information. If you're interested in high tunnels, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.